Gene editing with CRISPR is literally changing how we define ourselves as humans. Chinese scientist Dr. Shang Kui demonstrated this when he genetically modified twin babies in 2018. They were the first designer babies ever, but also the last, because his actions weren't actually legal and they ended up getting him incarcerated. Let's get into how whole industries are being disrupted by the promise of CRISPR and what's going on with human gene editing. Scientists have rejuvenated the skin cells taken from a pioneer in CRISPR gene editing. We realized that we could harness its function as a genetic engineering technology. They can fix it simply by editing it out of your genes and DNA. We are the most, maybe the most adaptable animals on the planet, but adaptation itself requires time. So CRISPR, what is it? Well, it stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short palindromic repeats, and I'm not gonna explain that name. But basically, it's a pretty new technology still in its infancy. It's actually made a lot of buzz in the science world. Just look at this chart, which depicts how many scientific CRISPR-related articles have been published since its invention in 2012. The two designers, Charpentier and Doudna, excuse the probable mispronunciation. Well, actually, they probably don't mind considering that they won the Nobel Prize for CRISPR in chemistry in 2020. And that's because with its precise gene editing capabilities, CRISPR-Cas9, as it's more specifically called, allows us to alter DNA sequences to our liking and potentially eliminate genetic limitations. To paint a picture of this, co-inventor Doudna said this. You can imagine that in the future, we're not subject to the DNA we inherit from our parents, but we can actually change our genes in a targeted way. So that could be anything from eliminating the chance of getting a genetic disease like Alzheimer's, or even enhancing our desired traits, which is a pretty big deal, but it also works on plants too where, say, you could make a tomato plant like this more nutritious. And I'll get back to the human side of gene editing too, because it's actually quite shocking what's happening there. But yeah, tomatoes. I want to mention this scientist here, because she's been dubbed the Tomato Queen. Yeah, that's a real name given to a real person. Scientists. Dr. Martin, the Tomato Queen, has actually developed a tomato plant that accumulates vitamin D when exposed to sunlight. And it offers a remarkable 60 times the recommended daily value of vitamin D in just one gram of leaves. And beyond tomatoes, it's been used to modify lots of other crops like rice, soybean, alfalfa, wheat, rapeseed, cotton, and cannabis. Yeah, here I thought it really couldn't get much more potent. But just think of how climate change is challenging our ability to feed our populations. With CRISPR, we might soon be able to make crops resistant to drought or high salt levels, or maybe even extreme heat or bitter cold. And that's a lot faster than more traditional agricultural methods like selective breeding or classic GMOing. And what's more is, when it comes to human use, we can use CRISPR from when we're just an embryo, changing our DNA from the beginning to be a so-called designer baby. By the way, thanks for not clicking away yet. You can support me by liking this video. And I also just launched a Patreon, so go support me there. That would be a lot of help. So where were we? All right, designer babies. What a nice way to say genetically modified infants. So in 2018, the Chinese scientist Dr. He Shangqui shocked the world by posting a series of YouTube videos documenting his unprecedented experiment. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies a few weeks ago. Dr. Shang Kui and his team were attempting to edit the embryo's genomes to remove the CCR5 gene, which would grant genetic resistance to HIV. And they'd actually been working in secret, maybe because they're afraid of how the world would react to this scientific experiment. But fortunately, the twin girls, Lulu and Nana, they were born healthy in October of 2018. And a subsequent third child was also born in 2019. Even though they were born healthy, Dr. Shankui's controversial experiments not only caught the attention of scientists worldwide, but it also received widespread criticism, sparking a debate around the ethics of the experiment and of designer babies in general. 
In the case of Lulu and Nana, there were concerns about off-target mutations which might have had adverse health effects and have created HIV-susceptible cells. Dr. Shang Kui and his team simply overlooked these risks. Also, none of the research had been peer-reviewed. Another point of contention was concerned about how the CTR5 gene, the one that Jiang Ku removed, is linked to improved memory function and stronger recovery from strokes. So questions were raised about how the baby's brains may have been altered in that case. It's clear that Lulu and Nana made history being the first designer babies and all, but it's hard to know if they're better off with or without their modifications. That's also something that raises a lot of ethical questions as well, and something that landed Dr. Shang Kui in prison. But first, in terms of ethics, editing ourselves like this raises a lot of concerns about societal pressure to conform to certain idealized traits, for example. Very likely, we could also see a lot of discrimination against individuals don't possess these traits. But it goes beyond discrimination too. On a much broader scale, in a world where tech such as CRISPR actually works 100% of the time, where we could have the power to enhance whichever aspect we really wanted to, we really need to think about who has the access to these new technologies and also how they're distributed. Because, as some scholars have also argued, if gene editing tech only ends up being in the hands of the elite, we could potentially see the creation of a genetic divide between those who can afford enhancements and those who can't. A biological class divide. As the author Yuval Noah Harari also states in his book Homo Deus, The cost of DNA testing is likely to go down with time, but expensive new procedures are constantly being pioneered. So while old treatments will gradually come within reach of the masses, the elites will always remain a couple of steps ahead. Throughout history, the rich enjoyed many social and political advantages, but there was never a huge biological gap separating them from the poor. In the future, however, we may see real gaps in the physical and cognitive abilities opening between an upgraded upper class and the rest of society. So it's really exciting, but certainly also scary, to see what happens in the coming years with CRISPR technology, especially also when we paired with AI technology. Okay, enough future speculation. What actually ended up happening with the Lulu and Nana affair, and Dr. Shankui, the so-called rogue scientist behind it? Well, in November of 2018, Authorities suspended Shang Kui's research and labeled his work as a violation of Chinese law. He was then fired from his position, and an investigation into the incident led to his sentencing in December of 2019. He was found guilty of illegal medical practices based on unethical conduct and of forging documents. He received a three-year prison sentence and was fined 430,000 US dollars. His two collaborators were also sentenced, but less harshly. Eventually, Dr. Shang Kui was released from prison in 2022, and now says he acted too quickly. The controversy prompted calls for stricter regulations and oversight of gene editing research to ensure that experiments like this are conducted within a set of ethical boundaries. Many countries, and even the WHO, have also since strengthened their regulations and guidelines related to gene editing, emphasizing the need for transparency, rigorous review processes, and adherence to ethical principles, and no more human gene editing on embryos. And as for the twin children, they're now toddlers, and fortunately they've been reported to be healthy still, although their future is uncertain as of now. It's a fine line to study them while also respecting their privacy something they might have to deal with their whole lives. Now, one thing CRISPR doesn't need to edit is slime molds because they actually do the impossible already, as I show in this video about how they literally designed the Tokyo metro system. 